Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. And I'm Joy J. Moore. And this is the podcast for November 24th, 2024. Uh, it is Christ the King Sunday for those churches that observe that, the Sunday before Advent. And we are in the 36th and the 31st chapter of the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Uh, we have, uh, we're still, still in the prophets here. Uh, this is our concluding episode for the, uh, for the series that we're suggesting you do, uh, that we're calling Unfolding Promises of God through the prophets. So we've been in the prophets now for a, a few weeks. Uh, last week, we heard the call of the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. Uh, today, uh, we're, we go um, uh, a couple of centuries later. So Isaiah 6, we put in the 8th century BCE. Uh, Isaiah is an 8th century prophet in Jerusalem. Uh, we're still in Jerusalem uh, this week with Jeremiah, but it's the 6th century BCE, and Jeremiah is uh, in Jerusalem, and he is uh, prophesying uh, to the king of Judah and the people of Judah and telling them not to rely on uh, on uh, Egypt uh, and not to rebel against Babylon, because the Babylonians are very literally at the gates uh, they're uh, responding to a rebellion by the king of Judah against Babylon. They're a vassal state of Babylon now. Uh, and Jeremiah sounds like a traitor. He says, you know, give it uh, a surrender, basically, to Babylon. Don't rebel against Babylon uh, or, or you will be uh, taken into exile and this city uh, will be destroyed. So you can understand why Jeremiah's message uh, is not particularly popular. So popular, so unpopular, in fact, that the king burns the scroll that his message is uh, is written on. Uh, but then we have a, a word of hope in Jeremiah thirty one, uh, where God speaks about a new covenant. Uh, so that's uh, that's where we are this week. It strikes me that the story in chapter thirty six is included in the narrative lectionary, uh, first of all, for its dramatic nature, as, uh, uh, as much as for its importance in telling the story of Jeremiah. Um, and that is uh, that it gives, it, it gives a wonderful chance uh, for a dramatic moment uh, in the sermon where it tells a story that so as um, as uh, the scroll of all of Jeremiah's words, and one can imagine this like really goes back to Jeremiah one one, uh, are being read. That as a section was read, then the king would take a pen knife. Uh, now a reminder: if people don't know what a pen knife is anymore, but it is the knife. It's a little knife that you would take to resharpen the end of uh, of whatever quill you're using, whether it's a, you know, a, a part of a feather or in the ancient world, maybe part of a reed more likely, and then to resharpen it. But then that instead he is cutting off a piece of the scroll of Jeremiah and then burning it. Well, so, you know, you've, I've got my little Swiss army knife. You could uh, do the same <laughs> thing and, and uh, talk about the bits of Jeremiah, and then cut them off of a of a of a homemade scroll. Probably don't want to cut words out of the church lectionary Bible. You might get in trouble. Although that yeah. would uh, uh, dramatically uh, tell the story, Exhibit. but it, it gives a chance to, to really depict the king doing it. But then uh, Jeremiah redictating the whole thing to ascribe Baruch. And that, that follows along uh, in terms of the promises of God, because this the words that Jeremiah are, are, are speaking are actually, in fact, the words of God to uh, Judah. And so the king has decided to cut away the words he does not want to hear. And so Jeremiah is saying, you know, these words are... They're not for me, so I'm just going to repeat what I'm supposed to say to you, and um, and and communicate that 
Um, so whether or not our words are heard, um, when our words are faithful, then um, they don't go away. They, they, um, they will be repeated generation after generation. And I think one of the things that struck out for me is the difficulty that we have of speaking a word that bears witness to the faithful promises of God in the world that we live in right now. It is difficult to speak beyond our community or beyond our tribe or beyond, you know, our nation to actually say, what is the word for, from the Lord for God's people around the world today? Yeah, and the, and the, the reason that we pair, that the narrative lectionary pairs uh, this story uh, of the king's obstinance and, uh, and rebellion, really, against the word of the Lord uh, the reason we pair it with as uh, sorry Jeremiah thirty one is that idea that that uh, as you said Joy that the the word of the Lord stands forever that's Isaiah but uh, Jeremiah says basically the same thing right same thing. Uh, in the face of human stubbornness right in the face of uh, of human obstinance oh, yeah. like uh, like king uh, like the king uh, God says I'll make a new covenant. Right? It will not be like the covenant that I made with your ancestors uh, right. uh, when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. And here you might uh, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. And here you might remind your congregation about uh, that story we heard several weeks ago now about the the golden calf in Exodus thirty two, mm -hmm. right? That uh, uh, right after the giving of the uh, uh, or the making of the Sinai covenant. The uh, the people rebel. They they make a golden calf. They worship it, uh, and God is angry with them. So, uh, uh, and then of course we also had the story of the making of the covenant with David uh, in Second Samuel seven. And what did David do? Almost immediately after that, right? He he takes another man's wife and kills uh, kills her husband, kills Uriah, kills <laughs> right? So so these these human uh covenant partners don't have a good record going forward and certainly uh the the king uh uh Jehoiakim uh follows in his ancestors footsteps that way it's uh, uh you know destroying trying to destroy the word of the lord so what does god do god is not god is not um god doesn't give up <laughs> god is not <laughs> defeated all right, you're right. gonna you're gonna break that covenant. Well, then I'll make a new covenant with you. Uh, uh, I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Right? You're gonna burn the words on the scroll. Well, I'll write the covenant on your hearts, uh, and I will be your God, and you will be my people. Uh, and everyone will know the Lord from the least to the greatest, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. So. God could come in wrath. Uh, God does come in wrath, uh, uh, using the Babylonians to uh, to take the people into exile uh, and to uh, to destroy Jerusalem and the temple. Uh, but that's not that's not the end of the matter, right? God reestablishes the covenant. God brings back the people from exile, uh, and God uh, promises to forgive iniquity and remember their sin no more. And just as you've uh, reminded us through Israel's narrative, that is always God's narrative with God's people. You know, so from the beginning, the first couple's disobedience, walking away from God, God continues to form a people with whom God's Spirit so evidently abides. And we see that in this, you know, I will put my Spirit in their hearts and so uh, God is forming a people with whom God evidently abides so that the world takes notice of God's presence. This is the continual demonstration of God loving the world. So how, uh, how does this fit with Christ the King? Uh, it's not a, a typical text that we, that we read on Christ the King. Usually the texts are more apocalyptic, uh, you know, uh, Christ coming in, in glory. But Perhaps this is the kind of king that we have, uh, right? That uh, a king who does not give up on his people, a king who uh, forgives their iniquity, who keeps on keeping on, who keeps on being faithful, even when uh, even when 
the human covenant partners are rebellious. So uh, this, this is the king and, that we worship. And th- this is the difference in um, the um, the uh, conditional covenants um, and contracts that humans make with one another and the faithful covenant that God keeps even when we don't keep our side. And uh, so the uh, I, th- I would see this Christ the King moment is a recognition of God's continual, uh, as demonstrated in the life of Jesus, expectation of our ability in flesh as human beings to be like Christ, to be faithful as Jesus was faithful, that as we are Christ-like, we will evidently bear witness to who God is and that God is, and that that's what God has not given up on. And that's what makes it hard for us to speak that today. It's, it's uh, as the lectionary points out, it's a dramatic moment in Israel's history. But if we follow this repetition that you've highlighted, Catherine, that's the that's human behavior, and that would be true of us today, just as it was the early church, just as it was ancient Israel. And how do we speak to say we aren't just right with God because we say we're Christian, just like they weren't just right with God because they were descendants of Abraham and Sarah, but that there's an evidence of God's Spirit so evidently in their lives that others would notice that God is. I Love to Tell the Story is a production of Luther Seminary's Working Preacher. The narrative lectionary was developed at Luther Seminary and has been hosted on Working Preacher since 2011. Find episodes and links at workingpreacher.org slash narrative. And be sure to rate, subscribe, and comment on YouTube. Thanks for joining us.